here. I hope you're all amazing. And if you are not, I hope my video could say smile on your beautiful faces and makes you laugh. Welcome to day three of the 12 days of anime. And I'm pretty excited to be talking about what we're going to be talking about in this video. Potentially, there could be a lot of fangirling. Just warning you guys now. At the end of last year, I only started getting into sports anime. And just for a fun fact, my first sports anime was Chihai Furu. And after that, I became invested in the sports genre. When I reached 300 followers on my blog, I decided to let my followers pick five anime for me to watch and review as part of like a little celebration thing and the ones that they chose from those five uh, two of them just happen to be sports anime and just happen to be quite popular which is the infamous both Haikyuu and Free had no idea I would become so swallowed up by these two shows the first one I'm going to talk about is actually um, Q. I'm on that Q train and I uh, don't see myself, you know, getting off of it, I don't. It has the most generic kind of plot, surrounds a young boy named Hinata who just goes into high school. He really wants to start a volleyball team or he wants to join a volleyball club and it uh, doesn't make it easy. The volleyball club doesn't when he wants to join and he meets the really stubborn-headed Kageyama and uh, the two end up later becoming friends that sort of start off like not enemy enemies but I guess yeah I guess we'll say enemies and uh, they end up joining the volleyball team Kara Karasuno if I'm saying it right the team had been kind of on the low track run and won any like matches or won any like of trophies or anything for years was famously known way back and now not and uh, yeah it's about the team being sort of reborn uh, with new members and um, you know making their way to the top there is a lot to say about Haikyuu but I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet that um, honestly the most thing I loved about Haikyuu was that it wasn't just focused on the Karasuno uh, volleyball team um, because of all the other teams they end up going up against, you actually learn about all of them, like all the characters in each of the teams. So when they're actually going up against these teams, like there's Date Tech and um, the one with that annoying dude. Oh my God, I can't remember his name. That's it, Arikawa from the Akabu Josai. Oh God, my pronunciation is crap. Um, they go up against them, I think, in season two, uh, Aoi Kawa, who's like this main, like, old star volleyball player. It's one where everybody, every time he's about to do one of his, like, deadly spikes, all the audience goes, oh, oh my god. I hate that scene. I hate it every time it happened. It just annoyed me. His character annoyed me, but in the end, I actually just ended up liking it anyway. And, yeah, just that's just saying, for example, that you actually get to know all the teams that they go up against. That's what made me feel so invested with Karasuno. Me rooting for them, screaming at the screen, crying for them when they lost. Um, it made all the difference in with this show it did that just got to know everybody and also what was great, you got really got to know the Karasuno team of their own individuality, their like goals, um, like I guess their dreams and their feelings and yeah you just honestly can't help but feel so invested honestly and uh, just for the record um, best boy is Noya. I love Noya. oh my god yes I would be happy to read when I actually do a live stream for my group from a part of owls we do an end of live stream every end of the month um, to talk about the felt blog posts of what our topics about on that of that particular month and the two co-hosts I do it with are Naja and Kat. They uh, are very high cue driven, passionate girls they are. And uh, yeah, it's always the deadly word whenever either of them or anyone says in the chat or anything, the word high cue. It's kind of hard to get back on topic. Let me just say, high cue just has this infectious magic to just draw you in. And there's just so many good goddamn moments in this series. 
I'll say one for the record because I could go through like a million. Parasuno is up against Date Tech where they're known for the like iron wall because they have an extremely tall player. He's known for their really strong defense, the iron wall. And one of their ace spikers, which is Asahi, he's lost to the iron wall before and he just does not have confidence to feel like he can get up over that wall, get the ball over the wall. And um, this is when Noya stole my heart, by the way, this scene. And finally, when he goes up against the wall, um, the ball just, you know, ends up going to the side of Karasuno. It's about to hit the ground and it's like, then we're nearly going to lose the match. And I believe this is in season one or season two. I can't remember if this happens, but Noya's like standing there. He's known as the position as the Libro. Um, very important player in volleyball, which you end up learning. High is very educational, trust me. And uh, yeah, he's like standing there like he can't move. He's too far away from the ball. He feels like he's not gonna get it. And then just all of a sudden, he just extends that leg, such flexibility. And the moment he just gets the ball with his leg and it goes back up in the air, it's just like such a badass moment. And I love it so much. I've like watched it, I think, repeatedly on YouTube for quite a few times, I'll say, that was a great moment. That's one of my favorite moments. And, uh, oh, Noya did it for me. So Haikyuu is definitely gonna be one of my favorite sports animes, I think, from now on, pretty much. And the second series alongside Haikyuu that really unexpectedly gripped me was um, Free. Now Free has been known, or I've heard nothing, but it's just fan service. And uh, as a female, yes, there is fan service in there. I want to say it's like good fan service, but that is not what I got as the main focus of Free from watching it. Um, the main focus was about the characters' bonds, the boys' bonds, which the series is surrounded uh, on uh, Nagisa, Makoto, and uh, Haru. They decide to form the Iwatoi Swim Club at their school, and um, they end up adding a new recruit later on, which is known as Ray. And um, originally when they were kids, there was another guy that was part of their team when they were young, which is Rin, but he attends to a different school. And uh, yeah, Rin and Haru are actually really good friends and there's actually a big rift between them. Um, I'm not gonna spoil anything there. And um, it's really about all of them just having fun with swimming and um, it does focus on Haru and Rin's friendship. It does. There's two seasons of free and the second one really focuses more on Rin and Haru then. Not too so much in season one. Very unexpectedly I found personal connection with. I've already touched base on this in my video that I did called uh, call Three Soothing Aquatic Anime. If you want to go show that out you can. And uh, yeah, I found personal connection with um, Haru, which, you know, he really loves the water. I love the water, swimming, etc., etc. And yeah, it just reminded me while watching Free how much I miss swimming. And honestly, it's, it became a huge influence. And even now, I actually am back into swimming and stuff. I'm actually doing classic fitness classes. So Free was an uh, influence in a way, and say it was like the total influence, but it was in a way us having so much fun with Free and uh, with such a comedic, likeable cast of characters um, in with their own little quirks and how they are as, as um, in personality. Um, it just made for such a fun watch and that is the word I'll describe free. It's fun. And uh, one thing also captivating me by the series is the original soundtrack or the music. It's just so different in different terms of um, like media that's used like there's like some tracks that like got rap in it and some that are really jazzy some that are just really harmon harmonical and yeah it, it, every piece of music that's used in every scene is just like spot on and of course it's got the aquatic factor so that was another surprising thing i loved about free and honestly i you i listen to the soundtracks the majority of the time when i'm writing or anything so it's just really soothing to listen to. So, in terms of this free more than hot bods, yes. And I think people need to stop 
having this underlining impression that it's just about fan service because it's not. So, and I was also kind of surprised how Kyoto Animation took this direction with the show or doing a different direction. So I was kind of impressed and isn't it great? We, um, we're gonna get season three next year. I'll tell you, when I, when I was like scrolling through my Twitter and found that out, I was pretty ecstatic. I was pretty ecstatic. So we're getting season three, but you know, Stereo Piro, you still need to give me my season four of High Q. We're waiting on that, seriously. When they go into the finals, oh, just give me my season four. I've got my season three of free. Give me our season four of High Q. That moment, I probably will blow my gasket, probably. Yes, free and high Q were definitely a highlight for me this year. That is all I got for you guys, both on those. And uh, yeah, maybe some, any females that are watching this, maybe you're potentially fangirling, just probably like me, that's probably inside bit. But please leave comments below. Have you seen high Q or free? What did you think? Let me know because I would really love to know, particularly with free, if you think that it is actually more than fan service. But yes, as always guys, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to keep up with my anime antics, you can follow me on my blog, Alita Kina Anime Corner. And you can follow me on Twitter, Kina Reviews. And yes, I will see you guys tomorrow for day five. Yes, we're on day five, right? Bye for now.